Um, so other causes of wet AMD, we'll go over them. There's, um, this is the bottom of the wet AMD talk, part three. Ocular histoplasmosis, angio streaks, myopia, idiopathic, and then I added macular telangiectasia because that's the one I see most often. The first four are the ones from the textbook, and then there's all the stuff on the right, which I have seen except for um, rubella and toxoplasmosis. So you will see other causes, but mostly it's the five on the left. Um, ocular histoplasmosis is Ohio River Valley. It's a yeast that's usually inhaled. Um, my daughter's doing actually a cool project on this for a PhD, but I don't have time to talk about that now. And um, a case has not been verified, but there, there have been, people usually test positive with skin test. If you look in the periphery, you tend to see punched out cardioretinal scars. Sometimes you see these linear ones, which are kind of cool. <clears throat> the mid periphery, there's also um, juxtapapillary scarring usually, and uh, usually bilateral, and there's not vitreous inflammation by definition. So if there's vitreous inflammation, it's multifocal choroiditis. If it's not, it's ocular histoplasmosis. This is a 62-year-old woman who came in with poor vision in one eye for 20 years. She had a big scar, and this was her good eye. Uh, the right and better eye dropped to 2080. And it looks like this. This is like typical. She's got that little, little no druse in. She's kind of younger. The vessels look pretty healthy. And then she's got this little scar with blood and fluid around it. And then if you look around the quarter, there's little scars there. So it's nice. So you know it's ocular osmosis, and then um, she's got a fluid on the OCT. But it's nice. There's not much under the center of the fovea, and you can see it looks pretty fresh. And the uh, uh, FA shows a net. So this is three months after the shot. She'd be great. She was 2025. 20, um, it's a little tricky on what to do next because she's one eye. So you don't want to mess with the eye. But on the other hand, histoplasmosis has a pretty big prognosis. Good prognosis. I think I stretched her out. Angioid streaks. They get the cracks in Brooks' membrane, you get a subretinal hemorrhage, sometimes not from CNV. You're supposed to recommend safety glasses because trauma is an issue. And laser used to be dismal with angioid streaks because what you would do when you laser them is you'd break through Brooks and it would just be like this never ending scar. Every time you treat them, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. So the anti vegis have been great. This picture has just a little membrane up top, which is interesting. I, I don't think I treated that one. Um, this is the other eye of that patient, though. You know, I might have treated it. Sometimes when the other eye looks like that, I'll treat it. Because you just look like, oh my god, look how bad that eye is. Is it hard to see, or you have to like look for angioid streaks? Yeah, the angioid streaks can be hard to see. Right. I have to say, this is, you know, if you get a, yeah, that's why, if you get a younger patient with a net, I always look for MACTEL, angioid streaks. Histoplasmosis is usually obvious, but the subtle ones mm -hmm. tend to be MACTEL or angioid streaks. And, uh, and then if you don't find that, it's idiopathic. Yeah. On this patient, you can see the streak yeah. right there. Okay. If, you, if you don't notice it, so. Oh. Yeah, they can be very hard to see. You see them on the photo. Actually, they're easier to see on the photos. Oh. So, in, yeah, in real life, they're very hard to see. You know where they light up? They light up on the late ICG. And the autofluorescence sometimes picks them up. I think it's, it's more of the late ICG. You see the streaks. I had one patient I was treating for AMD, and he started, he wasn't behaving while I did an FA ICG. And I was like, oh my goodness, you've had Android streaks because it's like they lit up everywhere. Um, you need to know the diseases. You guys have some mnemonic. It's pseudoxanthoma elastica is a big one. And then put Paget's beta thalassemia, sickle cell, and Ehlers Danlos. Um, pathologic myopia gets CNV. 5% um, of eyes with an axial length over 26 get pathologic myopia. It's not always at a lacquer crack. Laser, again, is bad because these people would have expanded. You'd laser them, and then as their myopia progressed, they lose the central vision with the scar. So laser is bad. Anti VEGFs are good. There are some studies on pathologic myopia showing that you don't necessarily need to do ongoing treatment. Um, you treat them for three months, six months, and then they dry up. So this is a net, that's a typical pathologic myopia net. It's a little gray area. This is gonna be quick, actually. Idiopathic CNV, anything, anything can cause, um, anything that damages Brooks and RP can cause a neovascular membrane. In fact, in animals, the animal model for neovascular membrane is laser scars. You do laser scars in animals and they'll develop CNVs. It's interesting, laser scars don't usually cause CNVs in humans. It's very rare, but they can happen. Um, for some reason or another, laser scars in central serous tend to cause CNVs more than other diseases, which is interesting. But, um, but in diabetics, it's very rare. We, I used to, when I first started practicing, I used to worry about I used to see them back at three to six months, worried about CNVs from the focal laser scars, but I have to say they're not common. Just to digress a little further, if you look at the histopath, though, of a diabetic that's been lasered, histopathologically, there is sort of a fibrotic area connecting lasers. So there is fibrotic response. 
Um, so idiopathic as well. I don't have any pictures of idiopathic. And then, like I said, MACTEL, I think, is, is a super common cause of, of uh, neovascular membranes. And it can be very subtle. And once they develop a neovascular membrane, it can be hard to tell it's MACTEL unless you look at the other eye, which usually has something. So in non-neovascular MACTEL, they have the, um, whatever it says there, they have the voids on the OCT is typical, some outer retinal atrophy, telangiectasia, crystals. Sometimes they'll get a black plaque, temporal lithophobia, and then um, normal retinal thickness. So they're not central serous or anything like that. And when they get neovascular, you'll see the hemorrhage. So you see a hemorrhage and retinal thickening in a PED. This is a typical non-neovascular MACTEL. You can see the crystals. Can you see the crystals on the color picture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a pretty one. And that's all there is on the OCT. That's the only lesion on the OCT. So this was more of a color picture MACTEL patient. I don't get ICGs on them. I guess you would see leak or fluorescence. I guess you would see leakage on a fluorescence. This is a guy I was following for a long time for MACTEL. In 2010, the picture was on the left. And then in 2011, he came in with vision loss in the picture on the right. So he was starting to hemorrhage a little bit there. The FAs are hard because the FAs all leak on MACTEL. So if you're looking for a neovascular membrane, I don't find the FA very helpful. Uh, mostly I get the OCT. And the OCT was on top, and you can see it's swollen. There's no longer a dip there. So on the bottom is treated. So this person got um, shots, I want to say that's like two months and four months, something like that. I treated him with they've asked him probably. And he dried right up in his vision. You're saying the worst in them right here? <clears throat> um, it's not in that cut. Yeah. But, uh, but there's flu. you can see the red, there's subretinal fluid yeah. and it's swollen. And in MACTEL, and this is absolutely true no matter what anybody else tells you because people say all sorts of things about MACTEL, the, uh, the thickness is normal or thin. So if you have a MACTEL patient and there's any area, the temporal of the phobia, it might be like 20 microns thicker. I've read some papers where people look at each quadrant. But in general, you cannot tell if there's any thickening on a scan. If you see thickening, there's a net there. Right. And um, um, so, all right, which is not a cause of CNVM? This is our little question. Myopia, vitreous hemorrhage, chakra hysteria, multifocal choroiditis. Good, perfect. I was trying to think a little bit in there. Uh, so that's it. Okay, so that's so other causes of uh, wet AMD, other causes of neovascular membrane are mostly high myopia, angio streaks, uh, cystoplasmosis, idiopathic if nothing else is there, and then um, MACTEL. The, um, in PIC, you'll see it a lot in PIC, and you'll see it a lot in other diseases. In the old central serous. Um, it, it's hard. I, we, we call, I think a lot of what, some of the nets we call wet AMD, you could call idiopathic. If you see a net in an eye with no drusen, it's technically idiopathic, I believe. So, so I think, well, no, there's a number if an 80 year old comes in with a net, like that fibrosis patient I showed you before, I think you could call that idiopathic, but it's an 80 year old, it's probably AMD. So, any questions? So, that's all of. AMD, we did dry AMD last month, wet AMD this month. It's a huge part of everybody's practice.